For the Lord himself will descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those of us who are alive will be caught up in the skies with the Lord, and there shall we be with the Lord forever. This is the hope of the church. My name is Faith Nobu Adra. Do you want to understand the realities of these end times? Dr. Linus Paulin, a winner of Nobel Peace Prizes in 1954 and 1963, said he believes, and I quote, the greatest catastrophe in the world is approaching, unquote. What about you? Join me on the rapture. The mention of hell on the pulpit is at an all-time low today. And that is why soul winning is also very low. And many people do not have any enthusiasm about soul winning. And why are we silent about the message on hell? It's because many people are going there. Many of the people who are supposed to be warning the world are heading there themselves. Many Christians are heading there at a faster speed. And if nothing is done, we can call it a nightmare. Hallelujah. So I began sharing with you last week about the country called hell. Let me tell you, believers, you have to understand there are two ways to eternity. For those of us who are saved, one, Jesus come at the rapture. The other one, even if you don't see the rapture, today people are going to leave this world. Yesterday, the founder of what? Oh, Apple left the world. Multi-billionaire, he left the world. How many did he take along? He left it all. You are also going to leave it all someday, even if Jesus doesn't come in your lifetime. That is why I'm warning you about the danger ahead the day you depart from this world. Hallelujah. For those who are not saved, there is only one way into eternity, and that is through death. There was one rapture recorded to hell, and that happened in the Old Testament. I will speak to you about that. Some people were raptured straight to hell. You remember those guys who withstood Moses in the desert? Yeah, the earth opened and swallowed them right there. Hallelujah. But you have to get it. It's either Jesus come, you are left down here, or you die, and you have to face that same question of choosing between heaven and hell. Throughout the past 2,000 years, since Jesus walked on the face of the earth, no danger seemed more terrifying than the consequences of eternity in hell with Lucifer, and no home seemed so dangerous like the prospect of going to spend eternity with demons of hell. Hallelujah. But no prospect also seemed brighter than eternity with the Son of the living God. And that is a mandate of the church. One day soon, you also have to choose between God and the devil. You have to choose eternity between light and darkness. You have to decide to spend the rest of your existence with demons of hell or angels of heaven. You have to decide to live eternally with good or evil. But it's all based on the decisions that you make today. Today the church is not interested in the laws because we don't know the consequences if somebody is not saved. Today we all want to sit in the pulpits, reign in the pulpits and let preachers uh, bless us. We sit there, church, we don't have any passion for the laws. Why? Preacher, bless me. Pray for me. Let me feel good. Let me feel comfortable. Let me get this. Let me get that. That is the vanity we have orchestrated on the pulpit and in the church today. Lazy Christian, you have to get out of that chapel. And go and work because if Christ returns, you will feel sorry for yourself. And that is the truth. Why is all these things happening? Because we have been silent on the message of hell. We are not warning the world about it. Because we don't know about it ourselves. Let me tell you, the founder of the temple of Satan, G.M. Blackwood, the founder of the temple of Satan. You know, we have the church of Satan all over the United States and Europe now, spreading to other parts of the world. They organize meetings where young people are led to receive Satan as their Lord and personal Savior. And it's happening all over the world today. Men pledge allegiance to Lucifer and they are working for him day and night. And I'm talking about one of uh, their core members, GM Blackwood. He said, and I quote, Satan teaches us many things. The first thing he teaches us is that he's returning. And we are to provide souls, army of souls for his return, unquote. That's what he said. They are to provide what? Souls. Church, what did Jesus tell us? To provide what for him? Visas for him. To provide what for him? Bangalows for him. To provide what? Universities for him. Satan's children know what their master want them to do for, for, for him. 
They are to provide what? Souls for his return. How many of you know that Satan is coming to govern this world? Actually, the United Nations, as you see today, will eventually elevate Lucifer to power. He will head the one world government. And we'll be out of here before. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that the battle on the face of the earth today is not a battle for your business. It's a battle for your soul. Agents of Lucifer will invest in anything that does not lead to hell. They found abortions. They found pornography. Of course, many of you are shareholders in the industry. They found many of the lies, deceits, fiction, things that tell us there is no God. That says there is no God. Many things. That is what they do. Why? They have their souls. They don't care to give you the whole world just for your soul. The greatest reward in the universe today is the one that follows the acceptance of eternal life in Christ Jesus. You must lay hold on that no matter what it costs. I'm telling you, if you let this eternal life in Christ fly away, you hear it every day. If you let it fly away, Bible says you will be one of the champions of fools who ever walk on the face of this planet. That may sound fancy, but when you get to eternity seconds away, if you've not made it, you realize what a fool you were all this while on it hallelujah i want you to wake up bible tells us in john 10 10 that the thief referring to the devil come to do what steal pamper the world offer them many things get them to die when they are not expecting to die and then destroy them what does it mean to destroy them to incarcerate them forever in hell and one of these days you are going to be faced with the same eternal stuff it is not an option going into eternity is not optional but going to hell or heaven is optional it's a choice Many of you are making that choice today. Hallelujah. It will interest you to know. I've met a lot of Christians. They don't even have an idea about what we are talking about here. They thought it's a fantasy. Why? Because their preachers don't mention it to them. Let me feel good messages. Let me feel fine. Oh, I want, I, love, I like that preacher. I'm not here to please you. Let me tell you that the very first day God called me. I understood this thing. And this has been my motivation. The contract to preach to you is between myself and the Son of God. Not between myself and you. I'm preaching to you, but not for you. Do you understand that? Yeah, and every preacher will understand that the contract is between him and Jesus Christ. And that he will be liable and accountable someday. will not hide the truth from you. Hallelujah. As I'm speaking, as some of you will be squeezing your faces. But you see, I don't fear any of those things. Because at the end of the day, I'm accountable to him who is able to destroy both the body and the soul in hell. I read a testimony. You know, now there are many testimonies, divine revelations all over the world from many countries. And I read a story of some two children who are severely cursing, beating, taunting, hunting their mother in hell. The three of them are in hell, mother and the two daughters. Why? The children are cursing their mother for not allowing them. When they were young, they wanted to go to Sunday school. The mother prevented them and they grew not knowing Christ. They all died someday. And in hell, there's no love. You are going to be cursing that thing that is shattering heaven in your face. You are not going to know your mother in hell. You are not going to know your father in hell. You don't care who is in hell with you. It's all going to be about hatred. Not a five-year term. Eternal hatred. Are you getting it? So that is why I'm going to warn you. There are 2,000 denominations in this nation today. All of them fighting for popularity. But none of them is seriously warning you about the danger of hell. Hallelujah each claiming i am the original church i am the oldest i am the youngest i am the latest you can go to hell from even the original or the latest church it doesn't matter you can go to hell still it's not about being in the original church or the latest church or the biggest church it's a matter of what's the relationship between you and the one who paid the price for the sins of the world on the crosses and you have to get that hallelujah one um major position running across the world today is that there is no hell it's a fantasy it is not true and many people in our churches believe the same thing they would have believed the truth if we had taught them but church let me tell you whether your preacher told you the truth about hell or not when you get there you can accuse him millions of times but that won't change your position you'll be damned forever there are many people in hell crying blaming their preachers that if only their preachers had won them they would have been more cautious Today we say it's not a fine message, it's not a comfortable message. Yeah, fine, but the earlier you hear about it and position yourself and structure yourself, the better for you. Hallelujah. Dr. Wellington, a theologian and a Bible scholar, said something. He said, and I quote, of all the many doctrines in the Bible, undoubtedly, the very first that the unbeliever will deny and the weak believer will question is the doctrine of hell, unquote. Yeah, the one that the church will question. Many people in our generation will question 
is the doctrine of hell. And it's because we have been silent on it for a very long time. Hallelujah. So there are a lot of people in the world today who ridicule this subject. But it is the first thing that is going to happen to them the day they die and leave this world, leaving everything behind. One of America's famous atheists writes, and I quote, The idea of hell was born of revenge and brutality on one side and cowardice on the other. I have no respect for anyone who preaches it. I dislike this doctrine. I hate it. I despise it. I defy this doctrine. Unquote. And that is his opinion. But the fact is that it doesn't change anything. It is still there. And the world must know about it. Hallelujah. Many theologians who are confused are still disputing the existence of hell. How many times have we been warned about hell? You see, anytime I stand before a congregation preaching, I'm aware that some of them could be some few minutes away from eternity some of them could be few weeks away some of them could be months away some of them could be few years away i don't know i can't tell who's going to leave the world the next day but one thing i know is that i must warn them this is not about letting them feel good hallelujah in her book i walk in hell a woman called ellen basley she wrote something she said, and I quote, Where are you going to spend eternity? In heaven or hell? You may say, I don't believe in hell. But my friend, two minutes in hell, I miss whipping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth will change your mind. When you realize then, as everyone in hell realizes today, that the Bible is the word of God, that you are a sinner, that Christ died for you, and that you could have been saved if you had believed and accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior. As you weep, well, gnash your teeth, you will be crying aloud in agony. What a fool I was. Too late, too late. Unquote. And that is the truth. The Bible says the unbelieving are automatic citizens of hell. You are there. Do you believe that there is hell or not? If you don't believe it, the Bible tells me in Revelation 21 that by the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral. Of course, this is a big department. Many of you are there. Those who practice magic arts, including those of them on the pulpit, who are perpetrating all kinds of things in the name of miracles, the idolaters, and all liars, another big department. The Bible says their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The God who promised to bless you is the same God who is speaking here. Bible says, why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What are the things that are not seen? You don't see heaven, you don't see hell, but Bible says they are eternal. Have you seen your soul before? You've not seen it before. It is an eternal stuff inside of you there. You see, God is a wise God. He placed your soul. He didn't place it in United States so that you go and look for it. He placed it right inside your body there so that when you wake up, you think about it. When you are walking, you think about it. When it is in good state or not in good state, you know about it. But we don't care. We are chasing after the wind. Chasing after the wind. You are going to carry the wind out of this world. Let me tell you some of the reasons why many people don't believe there is hell today. Or they don't care about it. They are not, uh, they don't hear that message. Is number one. The first view we have about God today. What do I mean? Many people see God as some dog father, some dog bulldog father who doesn't care. Uh, he just died for the sins of the world so that we can have a more license to sin and commit sin and just keep coming to be forgiven and be forgiven and be forgiven. We have a false view about God as a lenient, lenient, the most lenient person. Of course, that is true. But how do you feel if you are lenient to somebody, kind to somebody, and he turned your leniency into foolishness? How do you feel? Let me ask each of you. How do you feel? Generosity of people. Oh, this man is a kind man. Oh, don't mind him. Oh, you can do anything. He, he, he doesn't care. Let me tell you, God is not that kind. Are you getting it? God is a kind God. But he's also a consuming fire. It is in the Bible. He's what? A consuming fire. Let me tell you. A, a gentleman called J.C. Ryle, he wrote something and I quote. He said, I call on all who profess to believe the Bible to be on their guard. I know that some do not believe there is hell at all. They think it is impossible. There can't be such a place. They call it inconsistent with the mercy of God. They say it is too awful an idea to be really true. The devil, of course, rejoices in such views of such people. They help his kingdom mightily. They are preaching up his own favorite doctrine. Ye shall not surely die. I believe that. The devil whisper in your ear, there's nothing called hell. It is a fantasy. That's what he told them in the garden. He said what? God is a loving father. Kind father. Ah, common fruit. You eat. Look at the whole plan of God has been distorted. If God is just some dog father somewhere, why didn't he let it go when they ate the fruit? And the whole humanity has been subjected to frustration by his will. Today, 
They ate a fruit. He didn't spare them. He sent his son to the cross. And we are handling it this way. And we want him to, to, to be happy with us. It is a fantasy. It is the devil's old trick. That nothing will happen to you. Oh, God is kind. God is too merciful. He is also what? A consuming fire. You have to get it and get it today. I want to show you from the Bible. About the illustration of the wrath and the severity of God. I want you to understand this. The Bible tells us in Romans 11.22. Because many of you are used to the fine, cool messages. Today you have to get this and get it straight. Romans 11.22. Behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God. There are two things here. Church, get it. Goodness and severity of God. Hebrews 10.31. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That doesn't sound comfortable, but it's also in the Bible. Why don't we warn the world about this thing? He punished the Israelites who were under a covenant that was sealed with the blood of animals. They disrespected the covenant that was sealed with the blood of animals. What will happen to those of us who disrespect and rejected the covenant that was sealed with the blood of the only begotten Son of God? Ask yourself today. Hebrew 10, 28 to 29. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely? Take note of it. How much more what? Severely. Do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? How much more severely? This is not a comfortable tone, but it is in the Bible. It is time, church, let us balance the punishment scriptures with the blessing scriptures. If we are going to get out of this world with our souls to safety, you may not like it. I don't feel comfortable talking to you about hell. But I don't have an option. I have to warn you about it. I know some of you don't feel good about it. But I'm not a man of the people. I'm a man of God. Do you understand? I'm not here to uh, amuse you. Look at it. The Bible says, if God did not spare Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at what it, those of you who do in English language. What does it mean that? If he didn't spare. If God spared not angels. It is telling you that if he didn't spare them, he will not spare you too. Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't spare them. He will not spare you too. Every preacher's priority should be, how am I going to get these multitudes that are sitting in front of me? How am I going to get them safely to heaven? If a preacher is telling you that heaven is not the ultimate thing, he's a child of the devil. Get it and advise yourself. Because you are not going to blame God. You are not going to blame anybody in eternity. You are going to blame your own self forever. What do I mean? If you are on board a vehicle and the driver is driving carelessly, what do you do? You ask him to change his style of driving. If he refuses, ask him to stop so that you get down. If you remain in the bus like a bulldog and you go and crash, you may not be alive to tell your story. Do you understand? It is a choice. There are many people looking for a single day today like this to be saved. They are in the dungeons of hell. They can't make any decision anymore. What about you? What people hear little about, they know little about. What people hear nothing about, they, they don't know anything about. And they are likely to fall victims most. Your preacher is not telling you about hell. And you are happy because, bless me, give me this, do this, do this. The founder of Apple, he died yesterday. He left it all behind. Is your preacher richer than him? He should warn you about hell. If he's not doing that, call him to order. Tell him that you are here for your soul. Let me tell you. There is a young man, the story of a young man dying. And when he was dying, this is what he said. Somebody used to preach to him, tell him about the love of Jesus Christ. When he was dying, few seconds away, when the realities of eternity dawned on him, this is what he said. He said, my friend, you always tell me about the love of Jesus. Why didn't you warn me about hell? Why didn't you tell me all this while that there is a place called hell? Today, when we tell you, you are annoyed. Robert Murray Cheney, a revivalist, wrote this, and I quote, as I was walking in the fields, the thought came over me with almost overwhelming power that every one of my flock must soon be in heaven or hell. Oh, how I wish that I had a tongue like a thunder that I might make all here, or that I had a frame like a lion that I might visit everyone and say, escape for thy life. Ah, sinner, escape. You little know how I fear that you will lay your blame or you lay the blame of your damnation at my door. Unquote. I will not allow you to lay the blame of your damnation at my door. That is why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Do you understand? 
Today, we don't want to warn about hell. Why? People say it is not a comfortable sermon. Hallelujah. Let me feel good sermon. It is not one of them. Hallelujah. Many preachers don't preach it because to them, it is not a comfortable sermon to the congregation. Sure. It won't be a comfortable sermon to a sin-infested, worldly, but blind congregation. They won't like it. But to a holy and pure bride of Christ, the preaching on hell keeps giving them a true picture of the grave danger, the blood of Christ. Save them from you see, if you want to appreciate somebody, you see what the person did for you. Some of you are great people. If a foolish man were to receive a bullet on your behalf and die, and you are living today, you owe every respect to that man because he saved your life. If the president were to face an assassination and a wretched man who has not been to class one received a bullet on his behalf, we will forever hail that person as a hero of the nation because what? He saved the life of a president. But billions of money of state money came vanishing into the thin air who cares but the life of a person is precious that is the very thing christ did for you he came in your place he he came he took the penalty on your behalf and you don't want us to tell you about this you say it is not a comfortable sermon so you don't like it so you have shaped all of you many of you are guilty in your churches you have succeeded in shaping the preachers to tell you what you want to hear if they are damned you also follow them you go with them are you hearing me Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to people or we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greek foolishness. If we preach his foolishness unto you, it is a stumbling block unto you, it's because you don't want to repent of your ways. Hallelujah. It should be a stumbling block to you. You won't like it. But seconds after you die, you will be pointing your fingers at the preachers on earth and be saying they didn't warn you. I have warned you this day. You cannot escape. If you go there, you blame yourself. You shut your mouth and don't point your fingers at anybody. It is a choice. You can believe what your church tells you or believe what the Bible tells you. Simple. The excuse we give on the pulpit today is that the members will be irritated by those messages. What do you mean by that? Jesus told Pilate that to this end I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, hear at my voice. Everybody who is of the truth, every church member who is of the truth, so be able to acknowledge the fact that jesus spoke on hell so if your preacher is speaking to you on this subject you shouldn't get irritated do you understand unless you are not of the flock you are not of the truth uh-huh. that one we understand and the bible tells us in john 8 47 that he that is of god hear god's words ye hear them not talking about the religious people of his day because ye are not of god are you of god i'm asking you this morning if you are of god why are you feeling uncomfortable about people wanting you preachers wanting you about hell look at this whole world today seven billion people funny funny things on the pulpit today how are we going to get all these people out of the danger of hell it is real how many of you have had a dream before and somebody was chasing you macho men have dream and they are scared presidents have dream and they are scared the body didn't move on the bed but the soul was in danger somewhere the dream that you have alone should tell you that there is an aspect of you that lives beyond the body it lives continue living even though the body is dead or asleep do you understand so you are not going to stand before god and ask him a stupid question that you never knew there is a place called hell because your soul inside of you tells you that life continues outside the body do you get that so i want you to come to your bible says blessed is the man who is not offended on on the account of me that is jesus talking are you offended because your preacher preaches to you the truth are you offended because i'm telling you the truth hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying don't let jesus christ be a stumbling block to you he's the word of god he's the truth if you hear the truth you hear jesus you don't hate me hallelujah the bible says this is the verdict light has come into the world but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil if you hear the truth if you hear the message get it you love what darkness because what your deeds are evil you reject that there's no hell you say it is a fantasy why because you don't want to repent of your ways that is a logical reason jesus said the verdict is already there you are not going to be blaming anybody in eternity jesus said this is the verdict anybody who perishes bible says that decision is squarely at your door that you rejected the truth you are not going to be blaming your preacher yeah you can blame him but it won't change your plight are you getting it if there's something you can do do it today what I'm telling you, I had a practical experience of hell on two occasions. So I'm not telling you something that I, 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 I learned from somewhere. You have to understand what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers say today they don't want to offend the people. That is the excuse they are giving. 
If I preach hell, they won't come to my church. So if you don't preach it, they come in numbers and you lead them to hell. Which is better? Preach the truth. If two people will follow you, let them follow you. Jesus said the world will hate the truth. If your members hate the truth, they are of the world. Simple as that. It is only the world who will hate the truth. Let me tell you, it's not that the members will be offended. Many of you have fed them on fable stories for a long time. So it is difficult for you to change now. How many of you? You can see your preachers, they know that what they are doing is not right. But they can't change. Why? They have sold themselves over to fables for a long time. And they would rather continue in that path and perish forever. But the choice is yours. You are not going to blame anybody in eternity. Hallelujah. Bible says in Ephesians 6, it's talking about church leaders that not with eye service, as men pleases. Today we want to please the people. I am not a man of the people. Are you getting it? I'm not a man of the people. I'm a man of God. It is my mandate to please God. If we want to please the people, we won't tell them the truth. And in eternity, they will be blaming us. Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of God. If your congregation cannot accept the truth when you preach it to them, you are keeping a bunch of natural people and you are going to hell with them. You have to get it and get it straight. Jesus spoke very difficult things. The people, it irritated them. They were deserting him. But what did he do? Did he say, oh, I've changed my position. Oh, let me come, let me preach to you nice things. He asked Peter and Cole, would you like to follow them? Why don't you follow them? Jesus was not here to please the world. He was here to tell them the truth. Some of you are bold enough. In our church, we don't preach those kind of messages. What kind of messages are that? You get to hell and see whether you'll be able to repeat that position. Jesus was not here thinking about offending the people. He was here to tell them the truth. He called the learned, the religious leaders of his day, a bunch of teeth. And that is what they were. He turned their tables in the temple. That sounds insulting. Paul called the Galatians foolish because they were gambling with their souls. Jesus told Nicodemus upon all your theology, you don't even know born again. Yeah, and that is what is happening today. Was he thinking of offending them? Hallelujah. Preach the fiery message on hell. Preacher, preach it. Preach it. Those who are able to tell you, Pastor, thank you, God bless you. Those are the people who are really interested in their souls. The ones who frown their faces, who don't want to repent. Let their blood be off you. One day you are going to leave this world. Are you going to say like Paul, that I declare the whole counsel of God? Or you are going to say, the people said this. You, you remember what Moses said? The people put pressure on him. And that is why he never saw Canaan. Are the people putting pressure on you, preacher? That you cannot declare boldly to them the danger facing each and every one of them. Jesus called the disciples. He told them, go, preach nothing. But this message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in Mark 6, 11, he said, Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart then shut off the dust under your feet for the testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Did you hear that? If I speak to you the truth, you will receive it. Jesus said, I should, I should, I should just wipe off the, the dust off my feet. It shall be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah, who never had a preacher, than for you, who was one, and you refused. Blaming us, insulting us, saying all kinds of things against us. Jesus said it would be more bearable. He said we shouldn't worry. So I don't care what you do with the word of God. It's between you and God. But what I preach to you is between myself and God. The only way to get people saved in this generation is to preach more on hell. Do you, do you understand that? It's to preach more on hell. Hallelujah. How many of you are private doctors? When you are sick of cancer, they tell you you are having malaria and you'll be happy till the cancer grows and destroy you. So why are you a believer? Your soul is sick. We are telling you what to heal it. And you are annoyed. No, why? Today the world cannot see the sacrifice. They cannot appreciate Christ. Poor people cannot appreciate Christ for saving them from hell. Because we have demonized them and told them that poverty is a curse from God. Because we know we will not help them. Look at that. People cannot appreciate Christ. Let me tell you, folks listening out there, whether you are poor, you are sick, you are rich, thank God because he saved you from hell. The death of Christ is to save you from hell, not to give you this whole world. The preachers who are demonizing you, kick them out of your way and make sure that you appreciate God every day. If not for him, if you were to be born in Afghanistan, where the Bibles are not permitted, how are you going to get saved? I wish I have a voice like a trumpet to warn you. But where to a wise is enough. God is calling you today. Come now and let us reason together. Say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
though they be red like crimson they shall be as red as wool bible says god commended his love towards that in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us that is a good news hallelujah today do you want to receive christ do you want to accept christ have you changed your position are you willing to appreciate christ even though your business is not doing well that christ saved you from the pit of hell pray this prayer after me say dear lord jesus i believe you are the son of god i believe you died for my sins to save me from the power of hell so that i don't have to spend eternity in eternal damnation i acknowledge you as my lord and personal savior come into my life i give my life to you whether i'm rich or poor i'll save you so that one day i'll be with you in eternal glory fill me with your holy spirit to help me understand the scriptures amen god bless you for making that decision my brother this is the truth you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free until the same time next week Remember to fear him who is able to destroy both the body and the soul in you. Bless you for listening to this message. For any inquiries about the message you've just heard, you can call any of the following numbers 0243 381 684 0279 935 868 or 020 16 282 to get copies of these and other messages by the preacher call the same numbers don't forget the word of the apostle paul in first corinthians 16 22 anyone does not love the lord jesus christ let him be anathema maranatha Just the songs we have sung